Philippians chapter number 3. And uh, I, I really got to thinking about this through the, uh, through the evening yesterday. And, and uh, I appreciate what the Lord's done for me. And, and this is a letter that Paul wrote um, from prison. You wouldn't think that if you read the book because Paul's excited about what the Lord's doing. He's full of joy in his heart. And, uh, and, and listen, there's a reason it makes me glad too, and that's Jesus died for me. So listen to what it says in verse number 10. It says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Verse 11 says, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Let's join together as we pray. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful again for the privilege that we have to join with these, our brothers and sisters in Christ, looking for help. Oh God, we can't do it on our own, but I'm glad that uh, you give help and we have hope. And we're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Use this time to encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. So I, I want to use a thought tonight. It happened because of Easter. I'm glad Easter came along, aren't you? <laughs> I'm glad Jesus came along. And so uh, we begin to look at this. And, and in, uh, in Philippians, again, this is a letter that Paul writes from prison. You remember some of the things that happened at Philippi. Uh, Paul, this is out of Asia, and, and Paul saw Lydia. And as he went uh, into uh, uh, Philippi, there's a young lady following him around. And she, she was full of a devil. And, and she kept saying that Paul was at Paul, that Paul and Timothy and Luke, I believe it was, uh, were excited and, and were men of God and were preaching the word of God and truth. You say, well, why did that upset Paul? Listen, we don't need the devil to advertise for us. And God can do that. And so uh, Paul cast the devil out. And they became angry with him, and they, they, they whipped him, first of all. Without being tried, they whipped him. By the way, Paul was a Roman citizen. Later on, he's going to tell them, come tell me yourself. And uh, so, so Paul went to jail. They put him in the inner part of the jail. And uh, you remember the, the uh, jailer, the Philippi, Philippian jailer came and was going to kill himself. He saw the doors were open. And uh, I don't know about you, but that would be a bad day to kill yourself. Yes take an old knife and stab yourself oh my goodness uh, take a gun and shoot yourself oh my goodness uh, but uh, it was a bad day for him he, he saw things were going to get worse and so he thought to kill himself but God instead said uh, through Paul uh, we're still here hey listen we've come here and uh, so I, there's a few things I want to look at tonight. First, let's look at the resurrection. Let's look at a relationship, at the realization, and the, re, uh, and the uh, reality of it, and revival. All this took place while Paul, and it looks good on paper. Let me say, it looks good on paper. But uh, we're not just paper. I mean, we're flesh, we're flesh and blood. God's got a purpose and a reason for all things that takes place in our life. And so Paul's writing this. He's excited about who God is and what God's done. He's excited. Paul wanted to go to Rome, and he's going to make it. Amen? Yeah. He's going to make it, but he's going to be in a Roman prison, and he's going to write this letter. And so he writes and says this. He said that I may know him. Now, first of all, as we look at this, he's talking about the resurrection. He said, I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So first of all, he, it's very personal. Let me, let me remind you, this is a personal walk we have with the Lord. It's very personal. If I could get saved for you, I would, but I can't. I, if I could, I, I, uh, Paul said that, didn't he? He said, he said for my people, uh, the Jews, he said, I'd give my life. I, I'd be condemned to hell if it was possible, uh, but it wasn't possible. And Paul knew that it was personal. And so the personal truth is this, that uh, uh, I may know him. Paul said, I want to know him. I, I, I got good news for you tonight. I want to know him. Don't you? Hey, I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I, listen to what uh, uh, even uh, John was talking about. Don't you just love John? And, uh, and John was writing. 
And uh, he declared, by the way, John's an old man. I say this uh, often with great compassion. I like old men better than I used to. <laughs> and so John's writing, and uh, he's probably 90, 95 years old when he writes the gospel. Can you imagine the gospel without John? Uh, or the gospel, the Bible without the gospel of John. Can you imagine the Bible without the Revelation, First, Second, Third John? Uh, but John writes this with purpose and plan. And uh, you say, "What are you doing?" I'm trying to find my place. Amen. I, I like my place, don't you? I'm glad I found a place. And so John writes uh, in chapter number 17, uh, and and just to de declare unto us, he said that I may know him. I, and John declares this. He says in verse seven, or verse three of chapter seventeen, he says, "And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent." And John said, "This is eternal life, that they might know thee." Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I want eternal life, don't you? Yeah. When, I, when I leave here tonight. I want to know I'm headed somewhere. Uh, I, I like what one old preacher said, I'm heaven bound with a hammer down. How do you know that? Because God settled it in his heart. Hey, I'm glad we can get settled in our heart and our spirit and our soul. And it's personal. John said, I want to know him. Paul said uh, uh, that I may know him and the power of its resurrection. So not only is it personal, but it's powerful. I'm glad for the power of God and the salvation. That's what Paul said. I might I know that power. That power might be real in my heart and in my life. And, uh, and the gospel is the power of God. And so Paul said that I might know the power of his resurrection. And uh, uh, not only to know him, but to know that it's powerful. I've come tonight to declare to you it's a powerful thing. Yeah. Hey, God, uh, uh, he, he's, he's translated us from life unto, from death unto life. Uh, from darkness unto light. Isn't that wonderful? I'm glad I got light in my life. And, uh, and it's a powerful thing. Paul said the resurrection's powerful. But not only is it the resurrection, but he talks about a relationship. He says, and the fellowship of his suffering. First of all, he talks about fellowship. And so I want to use this thought, uh, sonship. I'm glad I'm his. I'm glad he's mine. I'm glad I'm in the family. I'm glad that uh, uh, Jesus lives in my heart. I'm glad I'm going someplace because I belong to him. Hey, he's my father, and I'm his son. Hey, listen, isn't that a wonderful relationship? And so uh, he said not only is it sonship, but there is a, a relationship of suffering. We've been called unto the Lord in fellowship of his suffering. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, I'll try to, to be a little quicker. Um, my hands don't work sometimes. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Except apologize. <laughs> but in Isaiah 53, this is what he said concerning. He said in verse 3, He's despised and rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Hey, we've been made partakers of that suffering. I don't, I don't understand all the suffering of Christ. Listen, I don't understand a lot of things. But I do know this, that Jesus was willing to come to this world and suffer for your sins and mine. Hey, uh, uh, the preacher described it very well this morning. He was a... A bloody mess. He was uh, he was beaten beyond recognition. His uh, visage was marred. Uh, we we uh, uh, his mother. I, I don't believe uh, his mother recognized him. Uh, and and by the way, we don't worship Mary. Thought I'd I'd throw that in there. It's a good a good little tidbit. We don't worship Mary, uh, but we do worship Mary's son, Jesus. And uh, we we're glad to be in this relationship of his sufferings. So uh, we find that we may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Then he says, being made conformable unto his death. So there's a resurrection, there's a relationship, and then there's a realization of what Christ has done for us. 
There's a molding going on. We've been made the image of Christ. Isn't that a wonderful truth? Uh, Romans 8, 29 tells us that, that we've been uh, uh, conformed into his image. I, I, listen, when I, I look in the mirror, I don't see uh, me, but I see Jesus. You ought to, too. I, I had a fellow tell me one time, he said, uh, and he knew my daddy well. My daddy was a good man. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, was your daddy a preacher? I said, no, my daddy wasn't a preacher. I, he said, but he was a good man. Good man don't get you to heaven, though. He says, your daddy in heaven, I, I don't, he's a good man, and he professed Christ. He said he was saved. He wasn't a church man, but I do know this, he was a good man. And I had a fellow tell me where I was pastoring. He said, I knew your daddy, and he's a good man. You're not your daddy. I said, I'm not trying to be my daddy. That's not my goal, amen? amen? My goal is to be Jesus. And sometimes it means to stand in a hard place. Sometimes it means this, to stand in a, in a uh, tough place. It means this, to make a stand for things that are not popular. I, I don't, I don't want to be popular. I want to be powerful. I, I, don't, I don't want to uh, uh, be uh, um, just a man. I want to be God's man. And so uh, we find this, that uh, uh, we've been molded. We're being made into the image of Christ. He said conformable, uh, be made into. And then he talks about conformable into what? Into his death. And so we talk about mortality. Uh, I, I, I want to say this. One day I'm going to die. This body is appointed unto man wants to die. But after that, the judgment. And I'm looking forward to Jesus saying to me, welcome, eat, come in, welcome home. I'm looking forward to say, uh, come, uh, ye who have labored. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, it, it is a, this great truth that we, we are going to die one day. It's appointed unto you to die. Death's coming. Are you ready? Hey, listen, are you prepared? Uh, Jesus, uh, Paul said that I, I'm a partaker of his, uh, of his death. You see that Christ died that I might live. Yeah. Amen. I've, I've died. I've, I've been, I was made dead in Christ, but now I'm alive unto Christ. And then he said it's not only resurrection and a relationship and a realization, but there's a reality. Listen to what he says in verse 11. He said, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So in the reality of it is that there's means. And means means, uh, the, the ideal of means is this. It is somehow, some way to obtain what Christ is. And so he said, By any means I might obtain. Hey, what, uh, what are you willing to do for Jesus? What are you willing to do for Christ? Are you wi willing to be conformed, made uh, in the image of Jesus? Are you willing to uh, give everything to Christ? H hey, listen, Paul said, I count everything but dung right. that I might obtain Christ. H hey, uh, uh, that means this, what you have in this world, uh, don't, don't lay it up, uh, your treasures in this world because rust and, and moth will destroy it. I'm telling you, uh, this, wor this world's uh, goods are, are going to pass away. But I'm glad to report to you tonight that God's uh, people, uh, those who have surrendered themselves, their lives unto the Lord, uh, we shall forever, forever reap the benefits of the Lord. A uh, preacher was talking tonight. He talked about a millionaire. I started to say, preacher, you're a millionaire. You are. Hey, man, he's, hey, he's bigger than a millionaire. I, and I am too. You're looking at a man who is poor but have been made rich through Christ Jesus. And by his means I have become Christ-like. He said that uh, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection. So he said by means, reality is this, of also a measure. And a measure is this, it's a plan or it's a course of action. Uh, I've, I've measured some things. I, I've, I've measured who I am. Uh, and, and you'll know who I am I'm a nobody but he's everybody he's everything hey, I'm glad in him I have hope I, I, I made this statement it was we were looking uh, I need help but I have hope I need help hey listen God will help you uh, and he'll help you if you've got hope that he will hey listen I have great hope not hope that it might happen but hope that it will happen 
And so uh, we have a measure, the reality. And then, and then as we move toward this week, our hope and our desire, our plan, our plan, our course of action is this, that God would stir our heart, revive our soul, and prepare us for what he has for us. God's got some stuff for you. It's not of this world, it's of another world. Uh, it's, it's spiritual. I, I wish I could... Uh, wish I could move on your heart and show you what spirit is uh, but I, I can't do that you have to do that for yourself and so you'll have to be here Monday night you'll have to be here Tuesday night you'll have to be here Wednesday night you'll have to be here Thursday night and Friday night you say I, I don't really want to be um, then, then uh, I don't believe that you have a desire in your heart to know him You see, to know him, uh, one person said to know them is to love them. <laughs> to know him is to love him. Hey, he knows you. He knows every, he got every hair on your head numbered. I make this statement for some people that's easier than others. But he still knows who you are and where you at. Hey, he knows when a bird falls from there. God knows all about everything. Hey, listen, uh, God, uh, you can fool a preacher. It's, it's pretty easy to fool a preacher. It's easy to fool your mom and your daddy. I've done that before. But you'll never fool God. Hey, he knows your deepest, darkest parts and recesses of your life. And that's what he's talking about in life. It, revival brings about life. Life everlasting. Life changing experiences. I'm glad I had a few of those. I, I'm glad I know Christ. I'm glad uh, that I can go places and, and be reminded of who he is and what he's done for me. That I've seen um, death. Hey, listen, death's a reality. I had a preacher to call me this week. Uh, and he said, my mother died. Broke my heart. But you know what? She's more alive than ever. I knew her. And uh, she knew the Lord. It's all right to know me. I, I'm glad some people know me. But it's better to know the Lord. I, and she knew the Lord. And, uh, and she's in heavenly places now. That's what life is about. That's what revival is about. To move from death unto life. To find help. And in these uh, helpless times, hey, I could I could tell you about uh, hopeless times. When I was a boy, life was very different. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but God's the same then as He is today. And so, if He can't help you today, if He can't give you life today, He's not the same God we talked about when we were children. Not only life, He said of liberty. I'm glad we have liberty in the Lord. I'm glad once in a while I can put my hands up and say, well, glory to God, hallelujah. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good thing. That's a great thing. That's a glorious thing to be able to praise God for the goodness that he has given unto us. We found liberty in the Lord. We have found a life in the Lord. We have found a, a revival in Christ. That we're, listen, I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I'm going to be, but I'm not what I used to be. If you knew me what I used to be, you wouldn't like me very well. You wouldn't have anything to do with me. My wife wouldn't have married me. But Christ saved me. And I'm a new creature. I have a desire in my heart to know him and to find him and to, and to seek after him and to allow this resurrection to be part of my life. To allow this relationship to grow in Jesus. Uh, to realize that God has a, a desire to make me and mold me into an image that men may see Jesus in me. And the reality. Hey, it's real. Uh, did, I, did, I, did I mention that? That God's real? God's real. And he'll take you beyond the... St one day, listen, one day I'm... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a plain air flight. I don't like airplanes, but I'm gonna take a plain air flight, and I'm going over the moon, and I'm going over the stars, and I'm going to a place that's been prepared not by hands. It is, it is, it is a, a reality. God is, and uh, then we have revival. Man, I'm looking forward to what God's gonna do for me. I need some help. 
I need some help. I'm glad that uh, we recognize we need help. I, I'm, I'm concerned that near the end of the week you'll think you got enough help, but you hadn't. Hey, hey revival uh, means this. It, it's, it, uh, it's continuing. It's taking us from a dead state in our life and making us alive again. That's what revival is really about. It's to give us life. It's to reveal to us liberty. Hey, hey God's able uh, if we'll let him. I hope this week you'll let him. I hope this week you'll say, God, take me uh, and move me and make me what I ought to be. Uh, you know, the children sang that little song years ago, uh, to make me what I ought to be. He's still working on me. I'm glad he's a working, ain't you? I'm glad he's a working. And, uh, and, and it, all this came about because there's an Easter. There was an Easter. Jesus was willing to come to this world and give himself a ransom. Uh, to give himself for resurrection. Yes. Hey, uh, hey, there ain't no chains going to hold his body down. He got up. He got up out of the grave. And he's seated now at the right hand of the Father. You know what he's doing there? He's praying for you. You know what he's doing there? He's praying for me. I, I need his prayers, don't you? I'm glad I got somebody pray. I, I like the preacher to pray for me. It's good when the preacher's wife will pray for you. It's good when the brethren pray for you. I, there's been some times in my life I got down on altars and people just got on top of me and prayed. And I said, thank you. But why tell you what's great about that? God was a praying. Yeah. Jesus was the right hand of the Father and he is saying, see that old boy right there? He needs your help, Daddy. Yeah. He needs your help. <laughs> you see, that's uh, South Carolina talk, Daddy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad I got a heavenly Father. Yeah who knows me, who cares about me, who committed himself to me, and he committed himself to you. I, I feel this way, and I believe this. If I'd have been the only one, he'd have died just for me. But I'm glad I wasn't the only one. I, it's sort of like that, uh, I heard this fellow say, it's sort of like that turtle on the fence post. He didn't get there by himself. And <laughs> that wonderful? Hey, God... God's got his hands on you and he's wanting to help you and he will help you if you'll allow it. If you'll, if you'll confess your sins unto Jesus, that's a good place to start, just to confess your sins. We're all guilty. Don't, don't come in here and act like you're not guilty because you're guilty. Hey, you're guilty. But, but I have one that can relieve your guilt. <laughs> He'll set you free. He'll yeah. give you life. Life and joy and peace. Paul's writing from prison. He's in bondage to the world. But he was loosed in Jesus. I, I like what the uh, Sunday school teacher said this morning. He said, I, I like that because uh, uh, Paul was happy. Hey, why was Paul happy? Because Jesus lived in his heart. You know what? I'm getting kind of happy myself. How about you? Isn't it good to know Jesus? I'm glad that the world might want to put me under bondage. And by the way, in the world I am in bondage. In the world I am in darkness. But in Christ I've received light and life and liberty and freedom. Hey, what freedom we have just to come together and worship Christ. He wants to help you. If you'll let him. You know what, I, I, I think this is the free will of man is that we allow Christ to do something in our lives. I, I, don't, I don't think it was a choice to be saved. I, I, don't really, I, I, I really think Jesus did all that. I, I believe that. I don't believe I had a choice. I believe uh, it's sort of like if you if you ever been where it was in checkmate and, you, and the only place you could move was to be taken. As a, I, I think it got like that for me. I, I, I came to a place where I said, Lord, I can't go that way, and Lord, I can't go that way, and Lord, I can't go that way, and Lord, I can't go that way. So here I am. I didn't understand that then. I, I thought I had more to do with it. But now as, it, as I've walked a little longer with the Lord, I've come to find out I didn't have anything at all to do with it. But I believe I do have something to do with it, whether I want to be revived or not. You got something to do with that. You got something to say about that. 
I hope your desire is to find real revival. Hey, hey there's a man coming. His name's Cody Zorn. He can't bring revival. But he can help you. Listen, I, I can't bring revival. But I can help you. I, I like that... Uh, I, I like that movie about uh, Robert Sheffy, and he Robert Sheffy said, "I'm just a servant of the Lord. I've come to help you." I, I'm glad for that, aren't you? He said, "I can't do anything, but I can encourage you." I need a little encouragement on the journey. This thing gets tiring. I, I get lonely. You say you're married, and you got children. I, I, that's not even the loneliness I'm talking about. It's a longing in my heart to know Christ and to recognize who he is and what he's doing and why is he doing it you know uh, one of my boys said the other day he said the reason I believe this daddy the reason Jesus died for us that he came for us is to reveal who he was and what he wanted and that is that we might have fellowship he just wants fellowship you know what he just wants to talk to you and he wants you to talk to him that's, that's pretty easy isn't it Listen, it's got to be easy for me to get a hold of it. And by the way, this walk with Jesus is not so hard and difficult. Some preachers make it sound like you, you have to have a Ph.D. preacher. I've heard preachers that sound like you had to have a, you had to know something to get somewhere with God. All you got to know is God wants you. And if you know that much, he'll take you to deep parts of this world. Hey, the deep parts of life, the deep intercessive parts of your heart. Uh, he knows your darkest secrets. He knows the depths of your life. If you if you let God, he will. It's up to you. I, I believe that. I believe that on my heart. It's up to you what you want, what you desire, and how he wants to accomplish it. They, listen, God wants to do some big stuff for you. Uh, the preacher made this statement to me early. He said, man, the devil's really fighting. That's because I believe God's really wanting to do something. He is wanting to do something. Won't you let him? Preacher, I, I don't really know how to how to stop. I, I don't, I've never stopped before. I've, I've just kept going. And uh, so I want, to, I want to ask if you would, would you come and keep going with me? That's my hope. That's my plan. That's my desire just to keep going. Would you come? Uh, stand with us. Uh, heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. There's a desire in your heart. Would you come tonight? Would you give yourself a ransom, a help, a hope for Christ? You say, wait, we, ne we need music. You don't need music to get right with God. You don't need a music to call on God. Just call on the Lord. You say, do I have to come? You don't even have to come. Just call on the Lord. He knows who you are. He knows where you're at. He knows all about you. He knows where you're going through. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're headed. That's what's good about God. He knows what He knows all about you. You can't fool him. No need to try. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.